very rarely repeated. But a residual in itself doesn't seem to be harmful. It seems to be nothing more than a playback and the, uh, if you want to even call them spirits, what the vision, what you're seeing, it doesn't seem to be aware of you. Whereas an intelligent haunt, it will be aware of the people around it. So if you know somebody with a residual haunting, just enjoy it, especially if it's somebody else's house. You have that demonic voice? Well, the next one I'm going to play is from the same house. And uh, this is, well, you were there. You know better what it says when you're going up the staircase and they're going to say, geez, my house, just go. Yeah. Yeah. This is what they're saying, geez, this is my house, just go. Yeah, it's the same voice. As Brian and I were like uh, depositing Steve Smoltz's uh, cassette recorder on a shelf of a, a, they had a psychic come in and she fled the house when she went near that closet. She said, I'm never going near there again. She said, it's something like the devil's in there, it's a hell hole. Of so course. naturally we bounced up there and put the tape recorder there. Of course, yeah. And I'm talking to Brian about you have the, you know, the nice scope set up. So. But it's obviously getting uh, frustrated when it says, Jesus, this is my house, just go. If you listen carefully, it's not as distinct as Jesus, but it's the only truth. Now, you have to listen kind of carefully for that, but it does say, yeah. Jesus, this is We played it over 20 some times before we determined yeah, the volume of yeah, you, do, you do have to uh, listen to these over and over. And of course, they, they almost words. always manifest when we're talking anyway, you know. Yeah, they seem, they seem to um, prefer to uh, have at least sometimes white noise, a TV set, turn on a static channel, down very low, radio, turn on a It doesn't have to be loud, it can be very low. The same applies to uh, outdoor situations and everything. They seem to be able to feed off white noise and communicate better with that. Like, while people are speaking or just after they spoke well, the vibration of the voice still lingers. Which is one of the, one of the most tedious aspects of paranormal research. We, you probably already experienced this. Is uh, going through six hours, reviewing six hours of videotape of a room, you know, with night scope on. Brian is that fun. Yeah, right. Fall it fall it takes a few times. Time. Oh, yeah, because yeah, you, you fall asleep the first few times. You know, you know. But it's not fun. <laughs> You can clearly hear where it says just go. It says, Jesus, this is my house. It's a little annoying to think because we're talking, but you know, we could hear this thing. I mean, this entity has a definite personality. Brian was uh, talking about how he uh, was confronting it, provoking it, and you hear it saying, uh, uh, how did it go? Well, the yeah, it said it didn't say a vulgarity, that's why I just like that. Yeah, it said, you know, it said sends the people here. It said, uh, yeah, that'd be nice. yeah, it said, that's nice. F you, man. Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, I gotta say, I like saying, it was a chance to get one of us. He was, in a way, it was vulnerable. I mean, I had a chance to get one of us. He was kind of like, it was almost a half sentence, so nice. Yeah. I like wise guys. I, I, for some reason, I, I like this entity. Yeah, because. if you don't know the name, you give them a little friendly pet name. Yeah. Name? And this, what? I call this guy, I call him Wise Guy. Okay. The one in New York. Um, I, have a I never have a pet name for a demon, though. No, demon, demonic voices, dangerous. you can tell they're different. They don't sound, they sound like voices, but they do not sound human. They sound very menacing. Almost guttural, like, you know. Yeah. And these, these are what seem, you know, there's no absolutes, but these are what seem, that's what seems voices so far. This is a, a house in Connecticut. Um, it's, you know, it's about, uh, built in the 1870s and a uh, long history. It may be on property that was once in Native American burial ground, which is actually, especially in New England, very hard to avoid because there were a lot of them around and you know, a lot of settlements uh, many centuries before uh, the white settlers got there. So. But uh, what happened was, Grant was downstairs with another investigator, Grant Wilson, our co-founder, and he saw this black mass. Now, the black mass was moving around. Well, black mass, you don't mean a satanic ceremony. You know, no, I mean, I mean an actual cloud-like cloud -like form in a semi-human shape, humanoid shape. And uh, it didn't seem to be attacking anybody. What it seemed to be was playing games, going back and forth. And he tried to take a picture of it, because it's right there. It moves out of the way. He goes to take a picture of it again, it's over here. And it's obviously, you know, playing cat and mouse with it. Fast. Quasi-intelligent is uh, one of the more frequent ones you'll encounter in paranormal investigations. This black form, you know, 
can see it on the corner of your eye. Some people will actually be able to follow it, but they're quick. Yeah, and usually this one you can see straight on, but just, he just couldn't get it on film in uh, video because it kept moving. Um, so what he did was he came upstairs and he was explaining it to me. And I was trying upstairs in the attic trying to get EBTs, and uh, I couldn't hear this at the time, but he's explaining that it, it won't let him take a picture of it. It's not going to be there. And I, I mentioned it doesn't want to be filmed. You're going to hear a very nice, sweet sounding, uh, sounding feminine voice telling me, let's go down there, let's go there. I have to say, there's also, you hear some pops and booms in the background because there's kids outside fooling around with fireworks. So yeah, it's right there the 4th of July, so that's, that's what the explosion is. Like. Whereas we don't, we have a limited lifespan. 
Now, what is classically known as a demon in uh, Judeo-Christian belief? This is the proverbial fallen angel. And a lot of people don't want to mess with them for obvious reasons. They can be very, very dangerous. And um, I have to say, the Atlantic Paranormal Society is one of the few groups that we do deal with in human hauntings. A lot of people, when they find out it's demonic, they want no part of it. Um, all of our members do deal with it. Everybody has a different specialty. Uh, Brian and I, we do. That's, that's what we happen to deal with. You know, I'm, it can be a very dangerous. You know, I'm not recommending somebody just go out and ch take on a demon. We take a lot of precautions, and we all realize it could be very, very potentially dangerous, even life-threatening. Um, this kind of basic demon is a very bestial being. It's intelligent, it has intelligence, but it's, it's very, it's very base. And uh, this is the kind of demon that's known to leave piles of excrement on the floor, write terrible, filthy blasphemies on the walls, sometimes in blood, sometimes with lipstick, whatever's available, uh, turn crosses upside down, uh, pour urine over everything, rain down urine sometimes, sometimes rain down rocks on houses. These, this is what in the demonic hierarchy you would call the infantry. They do the dirty work. There's beings above them that are very highly intelligent, and uh, they, don't, they aren't usually involved in cases of human possession. Um, for some reason, they're above that. They, I think their job would be more to mislead. Yeah, rather than yeah. Inspire they, are, they are the real, they're like the generals of the, um, of the organization. You know, they give the orders, they make the decisions. They're told, they tell the lesser entities who to possess and who to attack. On the opposite side is, is the angelics. You know, they're also inhuman spirits. Um, they've never actually, they can appear as humans, but they were never actually created as humans. They were created as a separate race themselves, as spirit beings. Some people even refer to them as extraterrestrials. If you've ever read or seen the movie Chariot of the Gods by Von Donnegan, it's the belief that some spirit beings are vastly intelligent beings did come down and live among humans or exist among humans and uh, interfered, contaminated their uh, genetics. I like that one. I'd like to see that one. Yeah, you know, that's, that's supposedly this is all uh, prior to the Great Flood in the, in the Bible where uh, most of humanity was wiped out because they'd been corrupted by these uh, angelic beings. So we have all these, uh, you know, theories and speculation about uh, demonic. Right. Basically, Basically, what we know yeah. is that they're here and they have certain consistencies in their hauntings. They seem to hate anything to do with religion, especially mention of God. You know, I found that they get very aggra aggravated, and that's called propagation. When you, call, <coughs> when you speak scripture to them, you talk about Jesus Christ. A demonic spirit has to fo follow certain rules, certain guidelines, just as we do. It can only go so far. It's like a demonic spirit cannot just leap into somebody and possess them. As you saw in the uh, movie Ghost, Patrick Swayze saw um, the uh, spiritualist was uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, Whoopi Goldberg was, uh, uh, Otto May Brown was sitting there and uh, conducting this room full of you know, therapy for the dead and one of them jumped into her without permission. You, know, that, you don't have to worry about that. That doesn't happen in real life. A spirit cannot just come in and possess you. What it has to do is break down the will. It has to have some sort of invitation. And it will start with three stages. Well, it, it will start with the basic haunt. It's called infestation. That will gradually move on to a pressure. That's when you get the uh, terrible activity, screams in the night, things falling over. It's, what it's trying to do is basically make you uh, doubt your reality, make you feel like you've come unhinged, make you feel unbalanced. <coughs> What's going to happen? You invite a friend over, all this is going to stop. And you're going to look like a fool when you tell them about this. You're going to feel very, very alone. And that's what this type of spirit wants, is you to really doubt your own sanity. That's why playing with a Ouija board can be very, very dangerous. It's not that the board itself, which is manufactured by Park Brothers in Salem, Massachusetts, it doesn't have any power itself. It's just a piece of compressed cardboard or plastic. It's the fact that you're using this as an open invitation. You're open, opening your subconscious mind to use your motor control to, to move the planchette. And um, you may be calling on Uncle Harriet, or as uh, Jason likes to say, Dead Uncle Fred. Uh, Dead Uncle Fred 
may or may not come, but if you're opening yourself, you may get something posing as dead echo Fred. And he may have been around, that spirit may have been around at that time, knows all the details, can even talk in dead echo Fred's voice if it's a case of a medium. Yeah, we'll change, yeah the rules kind of blur there. Uh, questions were frequently asked in lectures are, uh, can a spirit harm you and can a spirit follow you home? The answer to both of those questions is a qualified yes. It doesn't happen too often, but a spirit can trip people, it can fling things at you, it can inflict minor injuries. Yes, uh, three of us were on a, uh, four of us, my wife too, were on a uh, case recently in Massachusetts where they went to a partially abandoned institution, mental institution, and uh, of course being an old institution, you know, the uh, treatment of the mentally <coughs> infirm wasn't too kind in years past. And of course there's a lot of residual residual there, there's a lot of negative entities there, you know, light attracts light, and people may have died there that were, perhaps had uh, spirits in them, and remain there after their death. So they, what they do, they, uh, they ask, you know, actually ask this, you know. Yes, they came there and were taking pictures, the they were getting all these anomalies in pictures, and uh, what happened is they were made to feel, you know, psychokinetically, they were made to feel actual feelings of sorrow, that was put upon them, and they, they were overwhelmed with deep sorrow, and of course they responded, one of them was a uh, assistant nurse, and uh, of course they responded, oh, well, we'll help you, we'll help you with any, come with us and we'll help you. And they took them at their word, followed them home. But this woman wound up uh, speaking in a voice that was not her own, and she couldn't remember having done so. She wake up with great big welts on her arms, and um, obviously the man's a bruise that we can have yeah. photograph. Obviously, it didn't appreciate her kindness and offering to help. Uh, yeah, this, this spirit type, you might even call it a clinger, because it, it followed them back at their invitation. But it, you know, they meant well. But it followed them back, and then it uh, it actually we went in and did the investigation and the blessing, and it actually uh, attached itself temporarily to one of our investigative team, whose name I won't mention right now, but had a problem with that for a little while. Yeah. Uh, so it, it actually it can follow it from person to person, and like it just wanted a home and it wanted a host. But these people were saying, can you take it with you? Can you take it with you? Well, we're not Ghostbusters. We don't, you know, press the little canister and uh, they go in and we take it with us. No, we, we don't want to take them home with us. What we want to do is help these people with that problem. And um, when I do this, this Christian blessing, which I do, I do not say, they say, is it gone now? Well, I don't say this house is cleansed, you know, I'll be in peace. I say, well, I don't, the air feels a lot cleaner, yeah, and it's not. I think it's gone for now. I don't think it's in this room. However, it will, we'll look for ways to seek back, you know, and if somebody, uh, they take out a Ouija board or start doing divination or talk, even talking, giving it too much recognition, talking obsessively about it, that will sometimes allow it to come back. So, what you have to do, we never just do an investigation and leave the family. We always do follow-ups, ask how they're doing, keep in touch with them, try to offer any help we can. It's always good to, when somebody's gone through an actual diabolical seizure or haunting, it's always good to follow up with uh, professional counseling. Yeah, because it, it seems to be always some psychological weakness. Well, maybe not always, but there often is uh, some psychological problem on the part of the family member. You know, uh, yeah, they look for the weakest link. These yeah, they may have a substance abuse, they may be depressed over something, and then, you know, talking to these unseen entities uh, about their problem. Eventually, like, you know, a radio signal, they pick up on something. I mean, we should uh, ask uh, if they have any questions. Okay, I was going to also pass this around. Oh, which is um, some other, another investigative group I know, they use psychology, talking with the spirits to get them to stop bothering the family. Also, this is one of the tools they use. It's, I believe it's from Arizona. It's petrified wood. And it has certain crystalline properties that do seem to be seems to be like almost a protective amulet in some ways. You know, it doesn't mean you can wear one of these and call one of these spirits and you know, just the good ones come. He's still playing with fire, but this does seem to have purification properties. That's not around pet by wood. I feel like in the late nineteen seventies when I started talking about this at school, um, the lecture used to have more demonstrations like you can have a lecture in front of people and create a poltergeist. You know, you want a very fascinating lecture that everybody's gonna talk about later. You can do table tipping where, you know, people put their hands on the edge of a table and say, table move, table move. And you know, about 10 minutes into it, if you want to continue the exercise, you see that, especially a wooden table, 
start pivoting rocking and then it leads you around the floor. You can talk more about demonics and, and uh, you know, have maybe black candles in the background. I, I used to have kind of a format like that. And it, it was a very interesting lecture, but I hear later that, you know, people said that something followed them home when they started seeing things in the rear view mirrors and all that. So, you know, it was experiential. Right. But you have to be very careful with things like that. Yeah, so, you know, if you wanted to, a demonstration, you know, the proof that there is psychokinetic uh, energy. Or, you know, there, there are spirits, you can do that. You, know, you can even do it in a classroom setting, but, you know, as long as, you don't, as long as you're very confident that you won't be talking about it, you don't care about your audience, then you can do that. All right, right. yeah. Does so, anybody have any other questions about our experience or anything? I want to share something that they've experienced. I, I mentioned earlier that I, uh, I haven't seen a ghost. I've seen an apparition in, in female form and seemed to be like the turn of the uh, 19th and the 20th century. Yeah, that's what I grew up with. And uh, things would happen there occasionally, and I guess you could call it a haunted house, but the house had never been lived there before. And, you know, no, the house was younger than us, so yeah, like, we, when my sister and I used to experiment with a Ouija board. Yeah, it was built on property owned by my grandfather. We'd never known a house to exist there before. It was Tony Corral. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and Brian, of course, has seen, a, Brian has seen an apparition up close and personal and of a demonic nature, most probably. In, in, in paranormal research, you have to qualify just about everything you say. Sometimes, most often, probably, perhaps, you know, but this is probably a demonic entity from the description and the way it approached them. You know, Brian will do a provocation, too, and sometimes it quiets it down after sometimes he gets very direct. That's why we usually work together. Yeah, but, you know, we all work together. We all have different strengths that we combine. We, we implicitly trust each other in this group. And I've had the one several paranormal investigators groups that we know each other and we work well together. That's right. And uh, new members, uh, there is, of course, uh, quite a thorough training period. We don't say, uh, okay, you want to join us? We uh, probably have an inhuman, but we're going to find out. You want to come with us? You know, it's, 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 it's a lot, a lot deeper than that. You know, we have to, you know, you know Brian has a uh, protocol which he takes care of a lot of training. And um, it's, it's step by step. And even when you get into the more heavy stuff, you don't know exactly how somebody's going to react. So we try to take this very easily. Yeah. Oh, one. I was going to mention that um, some people are very uncomfortable with the demonic, uh, even elementals. And you would never, even if they've been in the group three or four years, you would never make them go on a certain investigation. Right. Nobody has to do something there uncomfortable. Yeah, we won't say, like, just steal yourself. You can handle it. No, somebody's uncomfortable with an inhuman, because un understandably, it's, it's, it presents itself like a different species, and it has very harsh guttural sounds that registers and, you know, on tape recording, so. Yeah, exactly. Scorhegan, well, that was quite a heavy haunting, too. That was where, Brian, you hung from a rafter to take some pictures, didn't you? No, I was actually uh, climbing a rafter in a barn to get a spot that he wanted, he wanted me to blast, and for only was about 100 pounds of sheet metal. Oh, We're happy to say Brian is still with us. Yes, right. yeah, just to yeah, to conclude, and then we go, if anybody has any questions, you can feel them. I just want to say that um, one thing, when you go in, you get to the level where people are calling on you, and you, you're offering your services, or if I work for the internet or whatever, people request you to come into the house and help them with their haunting. Initially, uh, you are performing your service just by being there because you're saying, we know you're not crazy, you know. Yeah, that's crazy. the first thing people will usually ask. So, do you think I'm crazy? Am and then after you tell them well, what you think it is, or, you, uh, or initially even explain, like I've explained, the different types of hauntings that could be, you get the toughest question. They say, how do we get rid of it? How do you get it out of here? You know? There's no definite answer. That. Yeah, there's no yeah. compact answer you have to. You can say, we'll try. We're going to do our best. Yeah. We're not, we're not ghostbusters. No. Right, right. We're not ghostbusters. It doesn't always work. It rarely works the first time and not always the second time. But we, we have gotten positive results. And we don't do this to get rich either. It's, we're a nonprofit organization. And uh, it actually costs us money to go on a case. So. Right, right. We refuse money people have tried to pay us. Uh, they can beat us. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll never say no to that. Hopefully, there'll be a, they always feed us, a yeah. smile, a cup of coffee, please. But, um, yeah, but we feel it. our own personal feeling on charging for investigations is that you know, it, it would make people question.
much from your it's like, it's like a television psychic. You know, sure, you can make your living at that and that's a genuine ability, but people question, you know, why are you into it? Obviously, you're trying to turn it off. This house in, in Maine, this house, part, huh? yeah. this house in Maine that my brother uh, mentioned was, his driver was very interesting because it was 26 rooms. He did a blessing of the entire house, plus the barn out and back, and this is in kind of arctic temperatures. And uh, it was not the only time we did that either. But you could actually sense the spirit moving from room to room as the corner did. And uh, as we blessed each room, what we did was corner it. And finally, at the end of the blessing, we asked for a sign of departure. Well, we did get one in the middle of the night, about, um, about close to three in the morning. The whole kitchen downstairs rattled. And uh, I guess it was like a 200, 300 pound parrot cage moved across the third moving across the room and then everything was quiet as you guys know from your experience it's one thing to tell about it describe it another thing to be there and see it experience it yes um, i don't always do that uh because to make sure it's not fighting no no why if, if you're asking yes you don't have to answer right well, that's why I always say, you know, if it's a classic demonic, I always say, I never challenge it under my own authority. I always say in the name of God. So it's not lying to me. To me, that's lying to God. I ask for in the name of God, in the name of Jesus. Somehow required to answer. Yes. And they, they do play by these rules. So, anybody, yes? Where would this happen to me? Well, yeah, I would see, yeah, but it's kind of. They, the family doesn't live there anymore, but yeah. uh, you know, all our, all our cases is uh, confidential. I think you yeah, so we can no, say, you know, we give a gentleman yeah, area, you know, but yeah, it's, in Maine, it's easy to track down. The family no longer lives there. But they don't live there anymore, so we can say it was still there. There's a bunch of theater in there. I've never been to it, it's still looking at it. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah. 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 Okay, so anybody else? Yeah. 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 Yeah.